why did some of these guys agree to sit down with you? What is the call for them to say, yeah, I'll sit down with John? What call came before you showed up? They would usually get a call from the World Bank, maybe the Secretary of State of the United States, somebody saying, you know, this, 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 this man's passing through your country and would like to arrange a meeting to you and talk about what we might do to help your country. That's the script. That's the script. Something like that, yes. And that phone call is made to who? To, 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 to the president or to, or to his chief of staff or whoever, whoever sets up such, such meetings. But it would probably end up in his hands and to Rios. So he was an interesting guy, guy you know, the head of state of yeah. Panama. He was a very charismatic party animal, loved, you know, loved his cigars and his, and his rum and barbecues. You know, I got to know him very well because he was very charismatic that way. Very flamboyant fr- or not flamboyant, the, just party? Yes, flamboyant. This, was is flamboyant. A, this is in the okay. 70s? Yes. This is before Noriega and everything that happened with that? Yes. Nor- my facts right? Yeah, Noriega came after that. So yeah. this was during the negotiations for the Panama Canal Treaty. Got with, it. And it was, it was Carter, Tur- Carter yeah. and, and Torrijos. And, you know, Torrijos got pretty much what he wanted in that. And he became a hero throughout the third, what we call the third, I like to call it the, uh, the, 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 the lower income countries, if you want to mm-hmm. call it that. Um, he became a hero. And so he became very dangerous. So the United States really wanted to bring him under control. So I was sent down to rein him in. And he wouldn't be reined in. Uh, he, was, he had tremendous integrity uh, and uh, a big ego also. You know, he liked to be on the front page. And, and he liked to be known as, as David facing Goliath. You know, he's a little country, Panama. Underdog mentality. Totally, you know, very, very small country, very small population, but it had the canal. And, and he became very very well known throughout the world as a guy who would stand up. So when you spoke to him and you, you, you use the same protocol that you use with you know, uh, <clears throat> others in the past, it wasn't effective with this guy when you spoke to him. No. He just wasn't going to budge. And he openly would tell you. He, what, what did he tell you openly when you guys spoke? Well, he, he was the one that really helped me understand what we were truly doing. He pointed out to me something, and I'll use today's numbers, but he, he, in those days, it was similar. He, today, if three, three Americans own as much wealth as half the United States population, right? And if those three Americans made 10% on their assets last year and, and half the country lost 3% and everybody else stayed the same, we'd show a growth of something close to 4%. So it would look like the whole country prospered when, in fact, only three people prospered. Half stayed the same and, and half lost 3%. And Torrijos pointed that out to me. And so if that's true in the United States where three people own as much as 50%, imagine what it's like where three people own not, as much as 95%, which is true in a lot of these countries. Torrijos pointed that out to me. He said, you know, these numbers that you're throwing around, the GDP, it's totally rigged in favor of the rich. You, you're not helping the poor people with any of these countries. Uh, and so he, he was one of the people that really helped me have to face the truth of what I was doing. And at the same time, you know, one time he, he took me out on his yacht. He didn't, he didn't own the yacht, but he had a lot of he, the friends. He was always out on these yachts. You know, we're on this yacht. We're, we're, we're drinking uh, all kinds of, you know, rum drinks. And as he's, we're, we're surrounded by these beautiful bikini-clad ladies. Uh, Sounds horrible. <laughs> just awful. You would have hated it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Panama, you know, bikini I just, ladies, yachts. Yeah. This is horrible. Patrick, Patrick, I just saw a video of you on a boat as you were arriving here in Florida. You were starting to come yeah. here. And yeah. It was kind of like that, except you were surrounded by all these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started on that, John. <laughs> okay, so you're, you're having this drink with him. You're on the yacht. Yeah. You're having a conversation with him. What's he telling you? Pats me on the back. He asks me a cigar. He says, hey, John, why don't you come work for me? You won't make nearly as much money, but you'll have a lot more fun, and you'll feel really good about what you're doing for the world. He tried to recruit you. Good yeah. for him. Yeah. Was What'd he pretty convincing? Him? Yeah. yeah. I didn't. I wish I, I, you know, I, no, I don't wish I had. He, you know, he, he, I think he got assassinated. His, you know, it's never been proven, but his plane went down in a very, his private plane in a very uh, suspicious, under very suspicious What was suspicious the, it was, it was called, uh, what was the thing called? It was a name for it, no? Like the project something that uh, uh, United Fruit, or was that more Guatemala? No, that, that was, was more Guatemala. That was yeah. Guatemala with our bins, yeah. Yeah, so w- with him, you know, you said something about when he got on the plane, Right after the whole deal he did with Carter, there was a tape recorder that went in, and the tape recorder blew up. Has that been verified? That was a tape recorder, or no? No. There, when he got on the when he got on the plane, uh, somebody handed him a tape recorder, and uh, that's uh, the suspicion is that it was a bomb. But you know, 
when a plane blows up, there's no smoking gun because it blows up too. And just three months before, less than three months before that, Jaime Roldos, the president of Ecuador, who also stood up to me, did not accept yeah. the deals. He, I, did, I wasn't as friendly with he him. He was loved, by the way. He was loved and adored. He, was, he, lo- he, he, yeah. he was loved and adored and, and democratically elected yeah. uh, for, for the first democratically elected president in Ecuador in, in a number of years. Uh, he wasn't as 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 warm and fuzzy and friendly as as Torrijos, so I never got to know him personally the way I did Torrijos. But so he he died in this plane crash uh, in May and uh, in 1981. And uh, Torrijos met, met with his family after that, and he said, "You know, my my brother Jaime was just assassinated by the CIA, and that, again that was never proven, but that was a suspicion." And uh, he said, "You know, I'll prob- probably be next." But don't worry, because I've signed the, the Panama Canal Treaty with Carter, so I've accomplished what I really came here to accomplish. And less than three months later, so, um, almost the same yeah. thing happened to him. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.